To explore if modern British kids are still developing the skills they need to become independent, three groups of under sevens are taking part in an ambitious experiment. So it's somewhere around this park. Their task, to travel across the capital by bus to the London Eye without their parents. Wait, I think it's here. Our seaside siblings are now loose on the streets of London, led by seven-year-old Leo. Yep, we found it. Good morning. Where are you off to? Um, London Eye. London Eye, OK. Take a seat upstairs, you'll see lots of sights. Waiting at their destination, Dr Zand will watch their progress using hidden cameras on board the bus. You don't sit in the front. And unknown to the children, there are undercover chaperones planted as passengers in case of an emergency. My son does not ride the bus on his own. He's nine, and I kind of go, could be him, I wonder how he'd cope. It's easy in the abstract to think we should not be helicopter parents, but now I feel quite protective of them and quite responsible for them. I can't see the London oil. can you? No. It's a natural instinct to want to protect our children from any fear they have, but fear can be a good thing. Darcy, the cannons! We're near now, the cannons! Oh, the cannons are here. After going round in circles... Hello. How are, are you? Are allowed to see the near? Yes. Seven-year-old twins, Judah and Darcy, complete the first task, finding the cafe. Now we need to catch a bus. Right. And quickly get to the park gates. It should be down there. That could be it. That's it. Can we have a trip to the London Eye? Yeah, when you see it, ring the bell and we'll stop you there. Thanks. Despite the challenges, Judah and Darcy are supporting each other well, something experts believe twins are particularly good at. Come on, I'm coming. In the park, five-year-old cousins Kieran and Rita finally tear themselves away from the playground to search for the cafe. Oh, we're really close. Yeah. I can smell it. Oh, I see two cannons. <gasps> cannons! We found the cannons! I found a cafe. It says cafe there. I'm really blown away by that. I mean, there's been so much time passed since I gave them the instructions, but they're, they're back on track. I'm going to get this one. There's another thing that strikes me watching them. They've stayed really calm and relaxed. They're kind of going at their own pace. And all the others are very task-focused. And I wonder if that's because Kieran and Rita are used to being unsupervised, so they don't feel like they're under pressure. Bye. Okay. It's the first time I've been to a cafe all on my own. So, Kieran, we got out of that gate, find where it says bus stop. Yeah, the bus lady stop. Said it. London Eye! London Eye! We We're going to London Eye! The pair are so confident, they strike up a conversation with a fellow traveller. We have to find the London Eye bus. What they don't know is she's one of the undercover chaperones. You have to find the eye. It's so interesting how confident a five-year-old actually is out in the world. And that, that's good and bad, you know, that's a reason to protect them, but it's also a reason to let them explore that and not destroy that confidence. London Eye, it's the London Eye one. London Eye. So we're sitting at this side, Kieran. Oh, we're going to go. It's really nice to go on a trip in a bus on our own, but it's a really special bus. The three groups of Planet Child Kids are all on different buses. Oh, look at that big tower up there. Riding across the capital. Rita? Yeah? Do you like being in London? Yeah. It's a sunny place. Do you know what is bigger, England or London? London. Yeah, I think it is as well. Is it bigger than my country? Yeah, it's gigantic. Look at on that side. Look, that's a big palace, right there. It's a Queen's Palace. Whoa. Wow. Do you think you want to live in London? Nah. I really like 
like being on my own. It's really cool. Well, why do I think I'm with my mummy and daddy? Darcy's really enjoying it, and Judah misses his mummy and daddy. Which I think is quite a twin thing. I think twins polarise each other a bit. So, so if one twin's relaxed, the other twin's sort of free to worry a bit more. I can't wait to get there. But it's taking a long time. The children have been told the bus trip lasts 20 minutes. But even at seven, they don't have a fully developed concept of time. They're not sure how short a minute is, or how long an hour feels, which is why on car journeys, they constantly ask. Are we nearly there? Yeah. Where's London Eye? I can't see it. Oh, look, there it is. Oh, yay. <gasps> I can see London Eye. The children have been told to get off at the stop closest to the London Eye. OK, I think we have to stop. No, not yet. No. But their different routes weave around the capital, with the eye going in and out of sight. It's up to them to judge when they need to get off. Yeah, I think we are nearly there. Yeah, don't press it yet. So this is one of the really difficult bits for them. They've got to feel confident enough to stay on through a stop. Like, what I don't want them to do is get off at Westminster Abbey and start strolling around. Let's stop Westminster. She Some of the children have been on their own for over an hour, and there's still a mile left to go. I, I don't think we're anywhere near it. Because if we're near it, we should see it. When kids get tired and overwhelmed, that's when they want help from their parents. It's when they're likely to give up. Now, these kids still have a way to go on the bus, and after that, they've got to find me here. And I'm worried this might prove too much for them. The buses carrying the children are closing in on the London Eye, where Dr. Zand van Tulliken is waiting. So this is just a difficult waiting game for me now because they have to judge this time and distance and it will be very easy for them to miss the stop. And if they do, they will be miles off course. Yeah, is that the stop button? Yeah, that is the stop button. You can press it when we think we're here. No, not yet. We don't think we're here, are we? Hiya. Also en route are the children's parents. Part of me feels like I've abandoned my children in London. I'm ringing the bell. With the least traffic on their route, Judah and Darcy's bus is the fastest to the London Eye. Darcy, don't ring that many times. When is he going to stop? I need to stop. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for the ride. You just never see this. You never see two children hopping off a bus with, with no grown-up. For the twins, navigation has been the biggest challenge, and they've still got to find Zand. I think we'll have to go there. So their sense of direction is not great. They've set off in completely the wrong direction. Look at the map! Look at the map! I'd imagine they've got a bit of deja vu about, like, oh, here we go again, the map, the map. I think we're going the wrong way. Let's go this way. Do you know I can see him? That's good. Let's go. Hey, hey, how are you doing? That's awesome. You're amazing, you found me. You'll be fine. Gina, how are you doing? OK. Awesome work. We were on our own and it was like we were bigger than we are. And we actually are. You were bigger than you are? Yeah. What do you mean by that? I felt uh, like a different age. I think she was struggling for the words because it is a big feeling that she did feel she'd grown up a bit. And that's why it's really good to give kids responsibility.